So, previously in this series we looked at unencrypted communication. The first video was about the, the attacks and the second video was about defenses, which was the format for all the previous videos, two videos per vulnerability so far. So you can check them out on uh, my YouTube channel here. There are, you can easily recognize them by this uh, thumbnail. Now, in today's uh, in this and in the next video we're going to look into user enumeration. Now this is something very common, maybe it doesn't have such a big impact unless it reveals uh, some more information about the user, but let's see, we I want to actually go through all of them, which are quite a few. Um, more excited about information leakage and then password management, but we'll get to those as well. So let's look at the, the user enumeration attacks, sort of like. So if an attacker can abuse your authentication function to test whether a username exists on your site or not, it makes exploiting other vulnerabilities much easier. Let's see some common ways users can be enumerated. Many types of attacks, many types of attacks, so this is a typo here, on websites are concerned with bypassing the authentication system. Logging into a site usually requires that a user supply a username and a password. If an attacker can harvest the list of usernames for a site, they have uh, half the authentication information they need to access those accounts. Now I'm actually going to make a pause here. I'm, uh, so one might say that this isn't and I would also say that this might not be sort of like a very serious attack but if you are able to actually harvest usernames then combine that with a very or an inexisting rate limiting upon login and you can have a very serious brute force attack which is very targeted. So that's one of the, um, the cases where things can go wrong when it comes to user enumeration attacks. Guessing passwords is harder but possible. An attacker will use tools to brute force common passwords or if your usernames are email addresses they might use social engineering to trick users into revealing their passwords. That uh, has been the case recently with very huge uh, or with big companies and data breaches. I'm sure uh, you might have seen this in the news. Your site will be more secure if an attacker cannot probe it for usernames. Of course, that's why when the user logs in or when someone tries to log in, if they provide invalid credentials, that's what your error message should be invalid credentials, not uh, this username doesn't exist or incorrect username or incorrect password. Invalid cred credentials, that's very generic. Let's look at some common ways that sites leak information about what is and isn't a valid username. So if you log in, if your login page has different error messages for unrecognized usernames and incorrect passwords, an attacker can write a script to submit usernames uh, and test the response. That's very easily done in Python. So let's say username admin password admin. It doesn't say anything because I have to click on the next one probably. So David password unknown user. So, password incorrect, of course. So you see this is ex exactly what I was uh, talking about. A safer approach is to return a generic error message when a login attempt fails. Let's see, Maria, unknown user or password. Better yet, invalid credentials. If it takes longer to check a correct username and an incorrect password, a clever attacker will be able to spot the difference. Of course, you might be able to write a Python script again using Python to check the time differences between the requests. So this takes five seconds. 
Make sure all login code paths take about the same time on average. For instance, perform time-consuming operations like password hashing even when you know the username is wrong. Now, this is actually very granular, but this is very useful when you're implementing a login in a secure way. Make sure that everything in the HTTP response is identical in all login failure scenarios too. Be sure not to respond with a cookie unless both username and passwords are correct, as you can see here. Password reset pages are another avenue uh, of an attack. Of course, so enter your username here. Sometimes when you enter a, an email, sometimes um, the error message actually reveals whether or not that uh, user exists or not. So this is also where things can go wrong in the password reset pages. If somebody tries to reset a password for an unknown username, some sites will respond with a message indicating that the account does not exist. Try to avoid this. So let's see, Andrea, unknown user. This is exactly what they were talking about. If your password reset process involves sending an email, have the user enter their email address. Then send an email with the password reset link if the account exists and the sign up email if it's a new email address. Let's see. This is still not good. The very best way to handle the situation would be to say if there is a user associated with this email address, an email has been sent to it. And that should be the generic message in all the cases. Same deal with registration pages. Try to avoid having your site tell people that the supplied username is already taken and this is a mistake that's still happening in 2022. If your usernames are email addresses, send a password reset email when a user absentmindedly tries to sign up a second time. See? If usernames need to be unique but are not email addresses, protect your sign-up page with some sort of a CAPTCHA. This will make it very difficult for an attacker to mine username information with a script. So this is good to know. If you're a very security-minded, consider adding exponential backoff after each failed login at them. What is exponential backup? Exponential backup. Back off. So uh, this actually means that with every next failed attempt, the um, retry takes longer and longer. So it actually, for example, if a user tries to log in with, uh, if someone actually tries to brute force the credentials, the password for a username, the first attempt, the first maybe three or four attempts, afterwards they will get a message, try logging in in five minutes, if the user logs in, tries to log in, or if the attacker keeps on brute forcing, you would say try log in after 30 minutes and, um, and so on and so forth. Or you can just simply um, send, uh, have them send an email to actually unblock their accounts if you're blocking their accounts after so and so number of failed attempts. Lastly, if each user is granted a unique URL for profile pages, make sure an attacker cannot enumerate usernames. It might seem like a good idea to differentiate responses with 404, 403, but this actually leaks information, of course. So 404 not found. This is actually forbidden, forbidden, not found, forbidden, forbidden. So this actually tells this user exists, this user doesn't exist. Those are the most common ways user can uh, be enumerated. Now, in the next video, we're actually going to look into how to avoid user enumeration.